When you were a little kid, you were probably told to share your individuality with the world, express it from the top of the mountains. But what makes you unique? Maybe you like J-Lo? I absolutely adore Mariah Carey. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm a neuroscientist at the Montreal Neurological Institute at McGill University. And today I'd like to share with you a little bit about the research I'm doing throughout my PhD. Personality psychologists have tried to answer this question using personality questionnaires, finding traits that differentiate you from the crowd, like extroversion, how much you like to be around other people. Some individuals like to be surrounded by friends, be the life of the party, the center of attention, and other people prefer to be by themselves, alone in a park, reading a book. Whether you fall in one category or another, you're somewhere along the spectrum. But neuroscientists have had a much harder job trying to answer this question. How is individuality encoded in the brain? Historically, neuroscientists have tried to answer this question by taking brain scans of many individuals and averaging them all together to find the representative brain of someone who, for example, is extroverted. Finding brain regions that are more active in people who like to be around others in comparison to those who prefer to be by themselves. Historically, this has worked. It's allowed us to map brain regions that are more active in certain functions, allowing us to understand where certain functions lie in the brain. But there's one issue. It ignores a lot of information. Because your brain scan is very different than my brain scan. So while we average information together, we're throwing away a bunch of individual differences. This is where my research comes in. I'm interested in these differences. We hypothesize that your everyday environment and everyday experiences shape the connections in your brain. They wire your brain. And so this, in turn, shapes your brain activity. And in essence, your brain activity should be very characteristic to yourself, kind of like a fingerprint. How do we record brain activity? We put individuals in a scanner and we record the electrical and magnetic fluctuations of the scalp. As you may or may not know, brain activity is not static. It's constantly fluctuating up and down. Sometimes it's very slow, and sometimes it's very fast. And that's specifically what we're interested in, capturing these dynamics. The other thing we're interested in is looking at connectivity, how two brain regions communicate with one another. So with these two features, the logic is that if brain activity is characteristic to individuals, we should be able to pick you out of the crowd solely based on your brain activity. That's exactly what we did. With 158 individuals, we try to identify people solely based on the two features I described to you, the functional connectivity and the fluctuations in brain activity. And we achieve a great accuracy, above 90%. It's very impressive. So your brain activity is very characteristic to yourself. It's kind of like a fingerprint. Now, you may be worried. You may be thinking, am I next? Do the tech companies know about this? But you don't have to worry. Because while the research is reliable and stable, the effects are not quite ready yet for commercial use. And I want to emphasize that the point of this research is to identify individual differences in brain activity rather than forensic identification of individuals. Next, we wanted to make sure that these results were stable. So we checked that it was reliable across days, weeks, and months. And we can reproduce this. The second thing is we looked at how long of a recording we need. We can do this with recordings as short as 30 seconds, which is very impressive. And lastly, we checked that it was something specific to brain activity and not something else you do in the scanner. Because you do all sorts of things in the scanner. You yawn, you stretch, you sneeze, you hum along to Mariah Carey. And so we wanted to make sure it's specific to brain activity. When we remove these artifacts from the recordings, we notice that it's actually brain activity that's driving the identification of individuals, which is amazing. Now, you might be thinking, uh, pff, oh, come on, I could have guessed that. My grandmother knows this. Of course, my brain activity is unique to myself. Pff, duh. Well, I want to emphasize this is the 
first empirical evidence that brain activity is not only characteristic to individuals, but it's extremely stable. And so we can use this method in future research to try to help identify how differences are meaningful. That's exactly what researchers are doing around the world. People like Dr. Wheatley. Dr. Wheatley has taken brain scans of individuals and asked them to watch YouTube videos while they're having their brain scanned. It's not so hard. Then she asked people to rate the other participants as either friends, acquaintances, or strangers. What she finds is that two friends have very similar brain activity in comparison to strangers. So this, we think, is because friends share similar tastes, preferences, worldviews, environment, in comparison to a stranger where you might or might not have this. So it seems like brain activity seems to represent some sort of preferences or your individuality and is similar to your friends who you share certain features with. People like Dr. Kaufman have found that it might actually go wrong. You might be less identifiable under certain circumstances. Risk of mental health issues seems to be one of these circumstances where if you're at risk for mental health issues, you might actually become less identifiable across time. You're less like yourself. Your brain activity is less stable. Now, we don't know why this is, and we don't know what it means, but we hope that in the future, we can understand these things. And maybe this becomes a marker of mental health. So let's put it all together. What did we learn today? We learned that brain activity is characteristic to individuals. It's very specific and unique to yourself, kind of like a fingerprint. That these results are stable across days and weeks and even months. We can do this with recordings as short as 30 seconds, and these effects are meaningful. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. We hope that neuroscientists in the future can take this information and use it. Use this technique to help understand how diff individuals differ in terms of brain activity, how this might be a marker of mental health, and move away from averages where we lose all this information. And maybe, just maybe, we'll understand why you like JLo. And I absolutely adore Mariah Carey. Thank you.